Hey guys, and welcome to my very first episode of When Sisters Talk. I'm your host, Tamika Melchizedek. Today I have a special guest with me. I have my lovely husband, Raymond Melchizedek, who's airing with me today. He chose a topic um, of who is Tamika Melchizedek. That's his topic. I was not about to argue with him because I had to sleep with him. So, Raymond, can you tell me why did you choose that topic? Um, two reasons. One, congratulations on your podcast. Thank you. I don't know if a lot of y'all know this, but it takes a lot to put a podcast together, all the equipment, all the time. And I feel like you got it together at record time. So congratulations. Yay. And this is the grand opening. So, um, if you guys have any questions on how to create a podcast, um, what it's going to take to do it, the materials, the software, all that, I think she's going to be coming and putting something together in a little while probably be able to read that in the comments where you can contact her and have her help you get your podcast together because it's not easy but if you want quality if you want good designs you want um, like the logo that she has all that stuff take time but it take money and um, you probably want to get get with her and get contacted on that but anyway yes <laughs> uh, Melchizedek is the family name for all y'all that don't know that's why I, the first episode needed to be about her and then faith. Um, a lot of people are looking for, you know, different ways to um, have their spirit, culture, their uh, soul cultivated, stuff like that. So I just thought it would be good to do something that's dealing with faith, something dealing with spirit or um, the soul more. At. And so, it's her show, but there's things about her last name that she got from me because we got married that she doesn't even know. So I was like, okay, well, let's do some things that's going to be in reference to the scripture. And also, it kind of coincides with the name of the show, When Sisters Talk. The first great talker or the first thing that we hear about the creation of man is... Um, the father and in the beginning in Genesis where they talk about and the father spoke and the word was God and the word was with God or the, these things or talking it just shows how powerful language is and um, how we can connect and how we can build through the voices or our voices so that's why I picked the topic Okay, so tell me, where did the name Melchizedek stem from or come from? For some of y'all that uh, don't read y'all scripture, you need to start reading. And um, before we can go there, we got a video that we're going to show you. But it came from here. For most of y'all that don't know this, this right here is called Paleo Hebrew. Very first Hebrew. And... Um, of course, mine says the scripture. Y'all probably gonna know it by this. King James Version, Holy Bible. I have two, and I also have uh, what's called or known as the concordance. This is a strong concordance. You see, it's exhaustive concordance of the Bible. And it's gonna be talking about the King James Version. So, if you're gonna go in and study, you need to have these. Number one, you need to have multiple scriptures. I don't call them the Bible, I call them scriptures. Just because you're going to get more uh, different takes, more information, um, and you're going to get um, a chance to see different people's viewpoint. And also, this right here is something that I know that a lot of y'all have never seen. This is the Father's name in Hebrew. Some people say it's Yahweh, some people say it's Yahweh or Yahweh, but this is his name and what you're going to see when I show you is that 
where you see Lord and the King James Version is actually the Father's name in Hebrew. So you need to know that because if you're going to be calling on the Father's name, you need to know what name you're calling on. It's very important. You cannot cannot stress that enough. In the scriptures, which, uh, one of the, the verses I'm going to take you to actually says that. It's in Acts, and we're going to go to it. All right, before we go um, any further, I just want to show you a quick video so you can kind of understand what the name of Melchizedek is or where it came from. Go ahead. Melchizedek is a character in Genesis. What's odd in Genesis is after the fall of Adam, every single main character has a small genealogy. Uh, Noah had so many children, lived so many years, and he died. The next person lived so many years, had so many children, and he died. The next person lived so many years, had so many children, and he died, and he died, and he died. The author of Hebrews picks up this character called Melchizedek, and one of the first things he states is, this person has no record of either birth or death. Now, is Melchizedek a theophany? Well, I think the answer to that is no. And I think we know that because the people in the story of Genesis 13 and 14 recognize Melchizedek as a person. So this is a real king who lived in a real time, who had a real kingdom. Now, what's interesting about Melchizedek, one, there's no record of his birth or his death. It doesn't mean he's eternal. It just means in a book of Genesis, which is a genealogical book, does not give the record. Secondly, his name, Melchizedek, Melech Zedek. Melech in Hebrew means king. Zedek in Hebrew means righteousness. He is a king of righteousness. Furthermore, we need to look at his kingdom. He's the king of Salem. And in Hebrew, that root word is shalom, peace. He's the king of righteousness whose kingdom is a kingdom of peace. The book of Hebrews then points to Melchizedek as a type of Christ in that Jesus Christ is a priest, not of the Levitical order. He does not do his work inside the earthly tabernacle, but he does it in the heavenly realities. Why? He's a priest of a different order, an eternal order, one that has no beginning or no end, thus the genealogical factor. Second of all, Jesus Christ in his death conquers sin and death itself, thus he is the king who has conquered sin and death and brought peace to his kingdom. And he's also the great high priest who sits right now at the right hand of God the Father, making priestly intercession on our behalf. So Melchizedek is a type of Christ. Christ is the fulfillment of Melchizedek in that he is the great high priest who has ushered in the rule of peace. That's why the book of Revelation says, in heaven there will be no more tears, no more wailing, no more covenant curses, because our king, who has given us righteousness, Melech Zedek, has also given us a reign of covenant blessing, no more tear, uh, no more sorrow. Okay. All right, so as you can see, the name that we have, our last name, our family name, is of uh, kingdom, is of kings, is of righteousness, and of peace. So what that means is, hopefully you can break some peace. <laughs> no, nah, but realistically, <laughs> realistically, oh, man. this is the order. This particular order is kind of significant for two reasons. Number one, in um, the story that... Uh, let me give you this quick story. I ain't going to read the whole thing. But uh, Abram uh, in the, uh, he's talking about in the Hebrew version but in Genesis I have a story also. Abram comes back from a war with five kings, insurmountable odds and he only had like 300 and some odd people. According, according to the scripture. 
If you want to find this particular scripture, it's in Genesis, and it's chapter 4, and it's going to be 4 through kind of like 15. Verse, uh, chapter 4, almost to the end of chapter 15. And what you come to find out is when Abram, who eventually becomes Abraham, who is the father of pretty much the whole nations and everything at this time, um, he has to go to war because his nephew Lot is captured by some these five kings. And they take him into captivity. And Lot and uh, Abram goes and fights and brings him back. Well, when he does, he comes down to, um, I want to say the valley of the Sovereign's Valley is what they call it, Sovereign's Valley. And when he goes down there, he's met by Melchizedek which is the king of righteousness and this kingdom is in Salaam. Now you heard the guy speaking about Salaam. Salaam is what you know nowadays as Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem. So that area is a area that of course is considered the, the, um, the land of peace. Even though at that time it was a lot going on around it. That particular area was a uh, peaceable land. And that's the land, the promised land that the children of Israel would eventually acquire. The father would actually give it to him. So Abram comes down and once he does this, he ends up meeting with the high priest. And in that exchange, Abram, because he's the high priest and because he's he fears Yahweh, he fears the father, and he's in the order of the chain of men that will eventually link all the way down to whom you know is Jesus and we're gonna get into that too. He makes intercession for Abram, meaning Melchizedek. When he does as a reward or as a payment, he gives Melchizedek tenths of everything that he acquired in that battle. Because he won a lot of stuff. He got a lot of land, got people back, he got um well not really land but cattle and stuff like that, property. And so, this is the very first time that the scriptures talk about tithings or tenths. Is is the whole root of where the whole church is claiming that they have the ability for tithing. And you got to remember, uh, Melchizedek wasn't even in the normal order. The Levitical order wasn't even established yet because they weren't even born. So, when you give tenths, you're giving tenths in the, after the order of Melchizedek. That order was taken up by Moses and Aaron later. And um, I felt like it was very significant to point out because there's a lot of people that's giving tents. They don't even know where it came from. So, you know, when you bear the name of Melchizedek, <laughs> you should know these things. You should understand righteousness. You should understand peace. You should understand... Um, where these things come from and if you're into the scripture you need to have your books open and you need to be reading so that's one of the uh that's a good story about melchizedek so i have a question what is your belief um we don't deal with religions there's a lot of people that kind of get hung up on religions and let me just explain to you what i mean Religions are kind of like the normal setup of what people believe. They just believe stuff. They don't have any root in it. They don't really study it. I kind of consider those a religions because you can get persuaded to do things or follow things without knowing, you know, where it comes from. Those are what I consider religious people. Those who are souls, as the scripture call them, souls or living souls. They're going to deal with a soul-based uh, system. Some people will call it spiritual, but you got to be careful about that because even though the scripture talk about spirit, spirit, the root word of it is breath. So it's not really something that you follow. It's just recognizing that you have breath. But we know that when you pass away, the soul does not die. So if you're saying you're spiritual, then you're just talking about being here and what exists here. A good example of that is when um, Yahshua, who you call Jesus. Yahshua, by the way, is the Hebrew name. 
And I'm going to show you what it looks like in Hebrew in a little bit. But um, when Yahshua, or Jesus, as you know, came, one of the first miracles he did was he turned water into wine. Well, that kind of makes sense if you think about it in the sense of breath. Because oxygen is in the air. And um, hydrogen and nitrogen is in the air. So, Science. <laughs> from a scientific standpoint, he actually turned the, you know, the liquid, combined it with a few other things, and created the wine. But that was physical. It was stuff that was in his grasp to be able to change because of the spirit. And if you ever, I mean, I know a lot of you kind of don't, you know, if you study, most people will know that alcohol is a spirit. There are different types of spirit. So that spirit that you're drinking is actually breath in a liquid form. Kind of a stretch a little, but it kind of goes along with why he was able to do that and his mastery and understanding of what spirit actually was. So did you choose a name, Melchizedek? Because he changed our last name to Melchizedek. Well, you didn't have it at the time. Well, he changed, okay, he changed his last name to Melchizedek right before we got married, so I had to get adjusted to that. So the name, is it safe to say that the name, our name, Melchizedek, means kings of righteousness? It, it means king of righteousness because Melech, of course, the video says Melech means king. And uh, Zedek means righteousness. He was actually what they considered a king of righteousness and the king of peace because of his rule over Salam, which is Shalom, which means peace. So he was like what they saw call a double king. He was a double crown because he had the kingdom of the Father on earth and the kingdom in heaven because he had the Levitic he had the the order after or the order of Melchizedek. So, um, so yeah, King of Righteousness, also King of Peace. Now, you have the Holy Bible over here. You have the Hebrew Bible. I forgot, what is this one again? This is the uh, Concordance. This is the Concordance. What this does is this allows you to take words in your scripture and be able to reference them. You can do two things. Um, you can, it works like a regular dictionary where you can look up a word. Say for instance, you want to look up name. And there are different scriptures under there. So if you are looking in Acts, which is what I'm looking in, and I want to look up name, I can follow this all the way, all the way down until I get to Acts. Get down here and I'm in 221. Whatsoever shall call on the name of. I may be actually reading that in here and want to know, well, what is the name that they're talking about? So I can go here, look at it, and then once I get it in here, then it'll give me a number. Now, this number is in italics. That means it's in, in um, Roman or Greek. But there are some numbers that are kind of just straight block style. Those are Hebrew. You take that, go to uh, 3686 in the back, flip that here, and now you can see Greek Dictionary Index, New Testament. So now you're going to be able to actually look through here, go to the numbers that it said, and get a definition, and then further research it so you really understand what they're talking about. So you're using all three books to um, make sense of everything. Yeah, because you got to remember that the times and the way language is spoken then is a little bit different than now. Um, some things that we use in commonplace now meant different things then. And so sometimes you got to reference it to make sure you, you're not being, um, that your, the definition that you have in your mind is the correct one. Because they may be saying something you might not understand exactly what they mean or why they say that. So, you definitely want to have all three so that you can study properly. And then, you know, you can add other things. You can add a Black's Law Dictionary so that you kind of get the etymology of a word or the root of a word 
and it'll help you better understand uh, where it comes from. So, also too, um, you can, um, as your, uh, let me just say this too, in case some people, I know they probably want to find out where they could get the scripture from. This is saying it's from the Institute of Scripture Research slash USA, Strawberry Islands Incorporated, 2303 uh, Watterson, Wat Watterson uh, Trail, PB, PMB 26, L L Louisiana, I mean Louisville, I'm sorry, Kentucky, uh, 4299. 40, and uh, we might be able to put that in the link down there so y'all can check that out. But just in case you want to get this particular version, and um, so you can have it for your record and um, actually see the names restored. The reason why I have both of them is because the King James Version doesn't have any of their names restored. So the reason why I brought both of them is if you ever looked in the Old Testament, um, Hebrew, you're going to see the word Lord a lot. Uh, and this one's kind of beat up, so. So you got Lord here, you got Lord here, you got down here, you got Lord. Lord appears about 7,000 times in the Old Testament. If you look at mine, everywhere where they say Lord, you're going to see this. That's a, they, uh, what they call Biblical Hebrew. This is Paleo Hebrew. This is one of the first. And this word and this word are the same. It's Yahweh. So instead of you saying Jesus or God, your person is Yahweh. Well, the scriptures say that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that. Okay. The scriptures, as they have been restored, are saying that. And then you get down here to the New Testament, and guess what? That's who this is. This is Hebrew for what you would call Jesus, but his real name, and his Hebrew name, because he was Hebrew, is Yahshua. So they restored that for two reasons. Number one, if the scriptures, just like here, in Acts 20, uh, 221, like I was telling y'all, and it says, And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. And of course you can see it's Hebrew right there. Men of Israel, hear these words, Yahshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim, have been appointed out to you by mighty works and wonders and signs which Elohim did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. So if you don't have those names, when you pray, who are you praying to? If they've changed the name to Lord, and you're calling on the name of the Lord, who is the Lord that you're calling on? Because Lord is a very broad word. could mean anything. We, I mean, in that time, there were plenty of people that were being the Lord of Windsor, the Lord of uh, Bershire. You know, these were different men, people. So, they changed those things, and that could be why you're close to your to what you want to do, but you're not able to get all of your prayers answered. You're not able to get all of the power that you should have. And that's because you could be unknowingly disconnected. And in that particular sense, it says you're calling on Yahweh. You're not calling on, you know, just a, any Lord. Because Lord could also mean Satan. And that's parts in the scripture where they have Lord and capital letters, but then they have Lord and lowercase. If you don't realize that, then now you have a problem. So this is why, one of the reasons why uh, I picked the name Melchizedek, because it's just about understanding, you know, and and the righteousness. When you, when you want to strive for something, you kind of put it as a goal. So it's like a family goal. It's a family objective. So the more you strive for righteousness, the more you're going to study, the more you're going to um, put the effort together to 
be um, on that path. So I was going to ask you that. So why did you choose that name for us? But you just answered it. <laughs> oh, and another reason too is um, I know a lot of us that um, that are supposedly have gone through the slavery, the whole um, 50s and 60s. I mean, some of that is true, some of it's not. Um, from my understanding, we've always been here. But they claim that we were slaves, and because of that, that some of us that have names that are not our own names. We don't have our own language. We don't have a lot of our own stuff. So as I started to develop and learn and grow, I realized, of course, what Malcolm X realized, what uh, some of these other um, groups that were trying to reestablish themselves in our homeland, because we were here the whole time. Even though they were able to conquer this land, it's always been our land. So, if you see Malcolm X and he put the X in the back of his name, his reasoning was he didn't know what, what name his family would originally have. Well, I wanted to change our name from what they call the slave master name because that was given to us and we didn't have a choice. So now that I had a choice, I wanted to use something that would create an objective, create an aim, and move the, the family into a different era, a different stage, and a different reality than what they tried to push on us. And that's why a lot of people changed their name. That's why I chose. And then, of course, I'm studying, so I chose a name that I felt would be good for that objective, for that goal. If you had to put a percentage on people changing their names for the same reason that you did, what would that percentage be and why? Well, it was very common back in the 50s and 60s, and that's why you see a lot of Malcolm X's, a lot of Brother Ian, you know, Brother X, this, P, you know, all of these different name changes because people were becoming more aware. They were becoming more reliant on themselves, and they were becoming more empowered. Um, as we go forward, people have kind of lost that because of the desegregation, and that could be a whole other topic, but that desegregation allow a lot of our people to kind of feel like they had made it and that wasn't the, the the goal but that's what ended up happening so the percentages nowadays is probably kind of you know smaller but back then there was a lot of people doing that in the 50s and 60s there was a lot of people changing their name and becoming more conscious and more aware of what was going on around them so at that time, it probably was about a 20 or 30 percent. But even if people didn't change their name, they were growing. They still were reading the scriptures and um, becoming reliant on their self. And that's why this is actually an important day. Um, with the corona and all these different viruses out there, you need to go into the scripture and start to um, become reliant on yourself. Start to, be, to cultivate your soul and become... Um, living souls. I mean, even to the point where people say, oh, I'm spiritual. No, you're a living soul. If you follow the scripture, the scripture describes you as a living soul. So, you need to understand that and start to go into the books and be able to pull out the things that you have because there's medicine in the book. There's soul cultivation in the book. There's um, direction, family direction inside those pages. There's um, empowerment, leadership. Um, sometimes you're not going to need to be the leader, but sometimes you are. And the house of Israel was chosen as a priestly house. And all those that are cultivated in it are supposed to represent that righteousness and represent that peace and actually be the leadership of the whole world. It says through Israel, the whole world will be saved. So this is one of the reasons why Melchizedek actually blessed Abraham because he felt like, okay, you're actually following Yahweh. And I can see it in you by you taking a small army into these five kings. He had five kings that he went against and he defeated them. So now he's able to come out with all this reward. And so he gave Melchizedek the tenth 
for giving intercession or for blessing him. So that's very important. So with all this going around, you're going to have to get back to basics. You got to go back to basics. I want to go off topic a little <clears throat> bit, but not so much off the topic. I just wanted to say to um, the people out here, because I get asked this a lot, how do he and I make it kind of sort of having different beliefs? And I just wanted to show y'all that this is living proof that it does work. It can work. Ten years together, three years married. Two different, almost different beliefs. So it does work. I also wanted to have him on the show today because I know it's called When Sisters Talk. But I also want to let you know that guys talk as well. I just like the topic. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's good. And I mean, that's, that's really not major difference is just um, as you understand more you're going to see that it's not really that different when you look at um, when you look at um, you know Islam those tenets and what they're saying in the scriptures is the exact same there's only one father the son even though he, um, the um, in Islam, they consider uh, Jesus a prophet. He is still divinely led, and his goal is to direct people back to the Father. And, they, and of course, they call him um, Allah. But it's the same. It's the same concept. When you go into the three major concepts of uh, what most people uh, believe in is um, Judaism, Hebrew. And, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But if you look at um, the Indian people and karma and, and their whole uh, faith, it describes, if you ever really studied it, it describes the exact same thing. There's a, a level of understanding that you climb as you get from karma to uh, Gina or Jinana, and um, I forgot the other one. But they kind of describe the same concept, Father, Son, Spirit, um, and bringing in a higher level of understanding. Even down to their, um, re their um, reincarnation. It's kind of the same concept. It's just that when you get to a certain level with uh, in the Indian faith, and, um, and for some reason it escapes me the name of it, um, i probably remember later. But... When you get to a certain level, you're not reincarnated anymore. So that's kind of the same concept that we have. You, you feel like you're going to pass away and then there's going to be a resurrection. Well, if you get reincarnated and you eventually rise through up to, you know, these levels, then you get to a level where you're not reincarnated no more. That's the same thing. So our similarity is a lot more, uh, there are, when I look at them, they're actually very similar versus the diversity. And because of that, or because of the religious people in there, not really understanding the, the tenets of what's in, but more stuck on, you got to do it this way. If you don't do it this way, you're not a part of this group. They're tearing people apart. When actually, when you look at the material, it's all woven into one line. Even all the way back to uh, the Sanskrit writings. And a lot of y'all don't know that, but that's kind of where a lot of this, the um, Dead Sea Scrolls and all of the New Old Testament come from. Sanskrit. So. So to sum it all up, who is Mel Tamika Melchizedek? She's my wife. <laughs> and congratulations. <laughs> she got through her first interview. Well, actually, it's not her first and Y'all gonna see those. But, uh, hopefully, Tamika, hopefully, she can um, live up to the family name. She picked a good topic. She picked, uh, she picked a good uh, title when sisters talk. So now she got to talk about some scripture and stuff, too, along with uh, everything else. So this show is not specifically religion-based. It'll be talking about relationships. It'll just be talking about life matters, period. Today's news, as I said in my trailer. 
So guys, I want to go ahead and thank you personally for coming on, being my guest, my sweet husband. <laughs> and um, <Boo. laughs> if, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? Well, um, probably the best way is to um, leave a comment and um, of course leave likes. We like likes. Hey guys, as usual, thanks for tuning in. I'm sure my husband will be back again sometime in the near future. Um, you can reach out to me at my Gmail. is WST2020podcast at Gmail. And that's for comments, questions, suggestions, or concerns. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at When Sisters Talk, as well as Instagram underscore at When Sisters Talk. Until next time, thanks for tuning in on When Sisters Talk. <laughs>